Hi, this is Zach with Frog God Games, and as you know, we have a new crowdfunding project going on Indiegogo, and it's Invino Gigantis, which is a recently renamed title, but it describes what it is. James Spawn is right above me, blowing smoke, looking big and tough, and he's the author of this and many other things. So, James, tell us first a little bit about yourself, and then we'll talk about the module a bit. Uh, my name is James Spawn. Um, I'm probably most well. You're fine. Um, I'm probably most well known for um, Barrel Rider Games, uh, which is a little OSR company I run. It's been around for a couple of years. Uh, probably most well known for White Star, which is the white box sci-fi game, um, and White Star Galaxy Edition, uh, and the Three Castles Award nominated Hero's Journey. Yeah, that's what we have in common. You and I have that in common. We are nominees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes we are. But what's funny is you mentioned all those first, and you've also worked on a couple of properties I'm not sure everybody's familiar with. Uh, one of them's Middle Earth. And I, 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 did, I contributed to about half a dozen or so, maybe a little bit more um, books for the One Ring role-playing game by Cubicle 7. And another universe, I'm not sure, it had the one with Darth Vader. What's it, Star Wars? You worked okay. on that too, right? Yeah. I've done, I've, done about, I've done a couple books for Star Wars, which if I could go back in time and tell my eight-year-old self, you're going to get to write Star Wars one day, I'd yeah. probably die. Yeah, I have to uh, tell them like yourself, like, oh, I can do Teagle Manor. It's not quite the same. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no seriously. I, I, can look, I can look at people and say, the role-playing game? Yeah, I started Darth Maul. Yeah, you know, you know he, he was uh, actually going to be tougher, but I didn't think you guys deserved it, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, actually, that's true. One of the abilities I gave him originally, the, the, the editor was like, that's too brutal. It's accurate, but it's too brutal. Don't do that. So this module actually started out after uh, the last North Texas Con, um, yeah. and you had worked on it um, for a while and then turned it over. We had bought a series of shorter modules. And as you were seeing in the, uh, I can show you here with the, uh, see the drip blood, which is the one that had ended. And uh, it was the first we've done on Indiegogo. And it, this is one of the proofs. So it's almost exactly, it will be, it's hard to see with the camera, but it's on hundred pound gloss paper. It is vibrant color for a short adventure module. It is top notch. The art we spent a lot of money on to make sure that it was ev evocative. The author you may have never heard of, Steve Winter, he wrote such things as like Top Secret or worked on Top Secret, wrote Star Frontiers. I think he did some work on 5e. I don't know. <laughs> but that's that's a tough act to follow. No, you know? but you know what? You have a tough act to follow too because you've written for a lot of different properties and you've also have written things that I from real range. And so what made you pick this for us? Because we kind of gave you a blank check. You did. You did give me a blank check. Bill literally looked at me um, at North Texas and said, if I asked you to write me a module, what would you want me to write? Or what would you want to write? And I, and I said, what would you want me to write? You're the guy cutting the check. And um, he said, he said, if I give you a blank slate. And I said, well, player characters always cast summon monster. Monsters never cast summon player. So I think that would be a really interesting premise for a module where the players are the targets of a summon spell and get put in a crazy situation. So <laughs> I got, had that happen to do with my, today with my wife. I got someone to go do work. <laughs> that's awesome. Bill, Bill about spit up, spit up his beer. He was like, that's great. And um, so that led me to think, well, okay, if somebody's summoning a party of adventurers, that's not a monster summon one spell. I'm going to move that's, over your head here real quick a little bit. Ahead, so they can go ahead, I'm this. ugly. Go for it. Yeah. Um, that's a you know a two or three or a four. So you're talking a high level caster. Why would a high level caster summon a group of mook PCs? And I said, well, what if it's not a wizard? What if it's somebody else? What are some magically using monsters? And I thought, of course, dragons come to mind and liches come to mind. I was like, nah, those are all been you done. Know, you know, been done. And I said, well, I really like giants. I'm a big fan of Norse mythology and um, storm giants are in many versions have been skilled spellcasters. There's a history of giants, right? I mean, some there of the are. best modules written are, but you did this from a perspective that I thought was a little unique. So. Um, yeah, I, well, I always wanted there to be a, a G4 and G5, which had stone giants and cloud giants and storm giants, and they never existed. So I so said, well, I'm going to write a, a module based on a storm giant. And the, the whole premise... He's not, like, he's not like the storm giants from no. like the one we are, you know, a lot of people playing here. Which is right. good, but really, but this is a different kind of guy. This reminds me of like the Paris Hilton of Storm Giants. Um, <laughs> Very much is he's um uh, Clovis uh, is he's a fop, he's a dilettante, and one of the cool one of the earliest images of 
when I played the India that I had my kid that really, really stuck with me was the cl- castle in the clouds. I love that image. Yeah. Just 30 years later, so it sticks with me. So it's like, what if you take a group of PCs and they get by a monster, somebody fell summoned to a castle in the sky? I was like, well, what are they going to do there? You know, what, what you know, they're going to die because it's run by a storm giant. And everything right. there's horrible. Yeah. And then I said, well, well, no, let's not, let's not just put them in some god awful situation. What would a, what would a, how would a storm giant think of first or second level characters? He would think of them at best as lowly servants. So I had the idea of well, what's what's a classic, especially in modern context with MMOs. What is a classic trope? Go in the cellar, kill the rats. Kill 10 rats, man. Kill 10 rats, gain a level. Right, right, right. And it's in the old Baldur's Gate video game. For <laughs> well, I remember those from, like, you know, Acrobath, right? There's, yeah, exactly. There's rats exactly. down there. Like, no, not rats. <laughs> exactly. So I said, well, okay, well, let's, let's, let's make kind of a joke out of this. Let's, let's, let's make it a little more fun. So uh, Clovis is actually the last in a long line of storm giant lords, but it's not a tale of this noble house that had tragedy befall them. They're a bunch of drunken idiots, and the noble house fell because they're morons. And they wasted <laughs> this is like money. the Kardashians as opposed to the yes. Kennedys, okay? <laughs> yeah, they are, they are absolutely, that's a really, I never thought of that, and that's a great comparison. Now, I usually don't use real life people, but it, it's an example of a very wealthy, very influential house that is uh, interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so, after reading your module, that's what it made me think of it. So, so the, it, this guy Clovis literally the, the the premise of the module is, and one of the things I wanted to do was this is a module you can literally drop into any early. It's for first to third level characters at any moment. Like they could be in the middle of a combat, and you know, if things are going bad and they're about to die, and you don't want to party wipe. Oh, that happens to be when Clovis is summoned. So good off. What's the Greek term? Immediate res, right? Immediate res, res yeah. exactly. But like, literally, and, like plucked to be. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So they they literally appear in his hand, and he's like, "Oh, this will work." Oh. And he he says, um, "I live in this castle. I'm alone except for my servants. My basement's a little flooded. Can you guys go make sure my wine is okay?" And what are you going to say when you're a first level character in the hand of a thirty foot tall storm giant? No. Well, uh, most characters I know would say no, but that doesn't mean all. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. And, and the module takes that into account. If you say no, he very politely tells you you're welcome to leave. I, and you can walk right out the front door and look down, and it's two miles down, and well, crap. Um, so the, basically the, the, it becomes what, what appears to this foppish, idiotic storm giant, who's basically a drunk, as a minor problem is, my basement's a little flooded. So, the whole module is set in his his wine cellar, which to him is pretty small, but it's all scaled to somebody who's basically ten times their size. So, like you see on the cover, one of the things that I mean, after a second glance, you're like, what are those crests on their chest? They're not crests. Those knights are salt and pepper shakers off his table. What's funny is, uh, you know, I show this all this the finished stuff to uh, the CEO Bill Webb because he he sees a lot of stuff late in process because there's so many things happening. And he's like, those look like stormtroopers. Like they're not. They're salt and pepper shakers. I'm like, see the halfling in the cup. He's like, oh my god. And what it, to me it, it makes a really cool play on some of the, you know, the shrinking. Um, Alice in Wonderland type stuff. Yeah, and plus, like, in, I think in uh, the Lost Caverns, there was a magic item that shrank you down to a cage. Mm-hmm. And it had a picture of a guy in a cage with a fork and a knife next to him that was always really creepy. This is a lot more playful, which I think is awesome. So, um, so when you set all this up, and we said oh, we kind of need a cover for this, and you gave us a couple ideas, and Casey Christofferson, who I will interview the next Indiegogo we do, um, he is our art direction, and he has art students that he teaches, and he's been doing it for 20 years. And he also is a writer of renown. He's written thousands and thousands of words, and they're all good. They're just uh, He also does this on the side. No, this is, his day job is teaching art. So he, one of our artists, Josh Stewart, they gave him an idea. They went back and forth, and I hadn't heard anything for four weeks. And all of a sudden, bang, I get that. And I was really pleased because it's a different than the last one we did with the City of the Drip Blood, which was really Conan-esque and real Frazetta. This gives me kind of that with a little bit of whimsy, and I think it's great. And it reminds me a ton of the module. The, the heroes on the front look like something out of a, of a 70s pulp. 
and I, and I love that. Um, it's not at all what I expected. Um, when, when Casey showed it to me, I was like, uh, and, and me being me, anybody who knows me for 30 seconds knows I'm obsessed with half lens. Uh, yeah, the first thing I keyed in on, I can, that, was, I can was vouch. The, yeah. Was the halfling hiding in the cup? And I was like, that's magnificent. And it's little detail in there. Like if you look behind the knight, the, the pepper shaker, there's a broken dish behind him. The barbarian in the foreground is about to step over a giant fork and spoon. Um, and these are not classic heroes. These are, you know, you know, savage warriors going to battle, except for the halfling cowering in the corner, which is fantastic. No, I think it is fantastic. I'm trying to see if I can get a little closer on that, but I'm not sure I can. But you can see... I just I love the fact that the salt and pepper shears have the at the top of their heads looks almost like chainmail. <laughs> and the funny thing is, um, one of the things I really you know Frog God always encourages, and I feel this is hugely important for a module. I feel like whenever somebody publishes a module, whether you're a big company, small company, one man press, whatever, make it useful outside of the adventure. So. The frogs have always encouraged me include new magic items, include new monsters. So, like, those salt and pepper shakers, they have salt and pepper in them, and they will throw them on you in battle, so you can start sneezing and, like, can't get your attack off or lose your spell. Or... I'm looking forward to the art on those, because we'll make them for the Toma Horrors, and they'll make great tokens for, like, Fantasy Grounds. That's oh, yeah. really cool. Yeah. I want to get the, I wanna actually make the salt and pepper shakers. Talk to Tullus and see if he'll make some sculpts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that would be awesome. Well, yeah. like, He's down for I, anything, you know. Well, And the monster listing has more than just for salt and pepper. I've got, like, if you throw sugar on somebody, well, then if they're, like, around insects or they get sticky, they'll, you know, you're wow. covered in sugar. These giant <laughs> bees are going to come sting the hell out of you. I can think of a few that I wouldn't want. Like, Szechuan peppercorn, please. <laughs> no, anyway, so this is um, going to be about probably 20 to 24 pages um, mm -hmm. for a little longer in Pathfinder. Uh, we were pleased when we received it because it is it was whimsical but difficult. It gave it kind of a twist. The monster summoning part, I've, I'd forgotten you when you tried to sell us on that. And Bill was already sold by the part. Some of the party, he was like, ooh, that's lazy. No. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's it's great. And uh, I'm going to make a hint here for those of you who watch it. James actually um, is doing a series of these, but he got interrupted real rudely a few days ago because uh, we were going to be doing a special holiday module because – you know, uplifting holidays about friends and family is what Frog God Games is all about. Um, and James wrote it because he's just the kind of fellow that will bring the holiday cheer to you, just like Bing Crosby. <laughs> but, I'm a friend of the people. That's right. So we have a we have a module coming out for uh, Pathfinder uh, 5e and Swords and Wizardry um, for the holidays. And James wrote that in a very short period of time in a burst of amazing energy. So I have seen him work twice in a row. And it's been great both times. And it's been great stuff. And it's You'll, you'll enjoy it. You guys will hear more about that soon. Um, other than that, uh, I have to admit, one of my favorite things that James has actually written, um, nobody else will say it, but he wrote a uh, Bear Rider game short for Labyrinth Lore called The Feastmaster. And I was impressed because I read that, and I was like, this is something no one else would write, but I can right now think of a thousand things I could do with this guy. A, you know, a... A, a sneaky butler, a, a person at the table who is, you know, has a very awkward, fancy hair and everything else, but yet he's also the guy who makes sure the poison goes to the king, right? <laughs> so, and there's just so much you can do because it's so eating is so central to life, and the fact you recognize that impressed me, and that was well, a while ago. It's funny because over the years, that class, and I've written literally a hundred classes. classes. I know, I have your book. <laughs> um that class, more than any other, gets brought up by name. Everybody loves that class. And I, and I was just like, halflings eat. So I'll write a class about eating. And people have done the Poison Ear. People have done the, the Samwise Gamgee type character. People have done the NPC who runs the inn. Did you do Gordon Ramsay, you said, right? That would be great. I'd never thought of that. An angry one with like a fire. Oh, that'd be a dwarf, dude. That, that would have to be a dwarf. If somebody said, I want to play a dwarf who does that, I'd be your Gordon Ramsay. That, yeah, yes, definitely. absolutely. Yeah, or the guy from the Aquarius from the Stray guy, the, the guy who did all the food, he was great. <laughs> Ted, I think was his name. He's my favorite. Like, if you really know your stuff, you can actually uh, hang around with the rich and powerful, man. Anyway, um, and this is why I like James's stuff, because it is a di little bit different take. It takes things that he knows from all kinds of – the other universes he's worked on, the other things he's read, and brings it into a place you don't expect, and this is going to be one of them. I think that any of you who back this module will be pleased you had. Um, 
it's going to be done the same way as Sage Earth Blood. And the highest, uh, the highest possible quality we can make it in, the more money we make, we might even force him to write some new material or an MPC or two that in the spirit of it, as well as um, some more interior art and various other things we want to enhance it. Because unlike our other Kickstarters, we're not adding purchasable add-ons. Once you select your reward, that's it. Everything beyond a certain level goes back to making it better. And like some interior art pieces, I already know a few that I'd like to do, but I have to run by Casey first. He's the boss on that. <laughs> One of the things I actually cut from it, Zach, was there's a there's a monster late in the module that I thought would be a great familiar, and I wanted to do a spell. And you know that would be a great one we could add, and we could even oh. add, if I we can't it. get it in, we'll put it in a PDF. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, James, yeah, I know you have some more uh, scheduled to do for us on, in this kind of series, and you can talk a little bit about that if you like your inspiration, but. If you could write anything at all for, I mean, let's say us for now, because we're not letting you work for anybody else, but um, <laughs> what would you pick? Oh, man, geez. Any, um, are we any, talking like just, just fantasy, or could I just you, go nuts? You, you know what? We're trying to get to know what the real James here is. What would you prefer? Um, I really want, I, I'm, I think I'm one of the six people in the world who loved it. I would love some Spelljammer-esque stuff out there. You know, I've actually, this year, I've actually uh, warmed up to Spelljammer. I've become a little more into it because I think that it actually was ahead of its time in creative in a way that it, in a way that it, a lot of things were stagnated. Spelljammer was ahead and didn't quite get the credit deserved. Oh. You ever seen, there's an old Disney movie that, not old, but a Disney movie that tanked that I love called Treasure Planet. Mm -hmm. I remember it. Yes. And that, that to me, when I say this is Spelljammer, that's what I show people. It's, I yeah. think it is without the uh, kind of Lovecraftian elements in the ship design. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love Spelljammer. I think it's a great setting. I know, I, I'm obviously a sci-fi fan with White Star and Star Wars and yeah, stuff. Absolutely. Like that. Um, anything involving halflings, I love stuff that's Ravenloft-esque, as we both know, based on other things I may or may not be working on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those things. Um, <laughs> anybody who reads this module and reads the, the, the Christmas module will understand that I have a, a kind of a goofy, but sometimes a bit of a black sense of humor about my, my writing, um, you know, bad puns and, 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 and things that make you laugh at the table because most of all, when you play D and D you're there to have fun. I never take it too seriously. Um, yeah. except when I'm writing Tolkien, then I have to take it seriously. Well, that's what makes you actually versatile as a writer. Um, Bill Webb, um, our CEO, he is very similar to you in terms of, he likes the games to be fun and to be, have puns and it's not a battle of who wins it's a battle of who has the best wit kind of thing and he runs games with 25 people and rewards people for doing you know smart things that are interesting and i find that to be incredible for great stories i can't compete though i've seen <laughs> so well, one, of the, one of the things that i want to talk about about vino is the entire module because you're in this dungeon that's built for somebody 10 times your size the opportunity for creativity being a rewarding factor. I look at my desk right now. What's on my desk, right? What, what horrible mm -hmm. things would you run into? Well, I have these speakers they could like, be pumped out of. I have this, I, I'm not even sure what you would call this, but this is a mouse like hanger, but you could mm -hmm. jump off. I mean, there's crazy stuff just thinking from a different perspective. I mean, there's a monster in there based off my dog. Yeah, and it was awesome too. <laughs> I remember it. I think we posted it on the on the Frog God Facebook page. So anyway, there's two weeks for this uh, to run. Mm -hmm. um, last time you were able to buy some of the city that drip blood at, after the funding period. This will be more limited because we want to make sure we get the count correct, and we had to go back and make some corrections. I wrote an update tonight, so we can make sure that those are all organized correctly. There are three different um, four levels. One is PDF only. And this will be available as PDF when the funding period ends, so it'll be a little bit more money in the, our store, but there may be discounts and stuff later, so that's not a rush for you. I'm not telling you that if you really want this but can't afford shipping, you need to run out. Um, it will be available. The soft cover will not. The soft cover books will come out. They will be about maybe 20% over the run if. We'll send them all to everybody who's going to get them, and then we'll have a few for a, like the first convention after, and then we won't, we won't reprint it because we're just too afraid that we can't keep them in good enough shape to send to you. So, the only other thing is James, uh, James and I also worked on Swords and Wizardry Light. Yep. And uh, one good piece of news that's a little bit different. Everybody who gets one of these modules from now on, because we have new mailers, specialty mailers, real thick, we needed something in the middle to keep them really rigid. Well, oddly enough, we have 10,000 copies of Swords and Wizardry Light, <laughs> and we want to get, put them in the boxes for a while. So, those will be coming um, with them. And 
it will give people who especially play 5e a little bit um, of insight into Swords of Wizardry. And it's interesting because when James and I worked on that, we worked on the late stage, and that was the first time I worked directly with him. He was creative at a point where I wish I could put it in, but it was just too damn late. <laughs> and so it's, ple it's a pleasure to watch his whole mo module writing process from beginning to end, even if it's only 36 hours. So uh, anything else you want to say to anybody here, James, about the oh. module? Um, one of the things I want to say, you talk about Swords of Wizardry Lite being included. If you if you were to pick up the Swords of Wizardry version, you could run this with Swords of Wizardry Lite. You would have everything you needed with Lite in the module if you're you know looking for a quick pickup game. And that, um, that's why what, what we designed Lite. Now, 5e is you found out how much how significantly more complicated it is, and to actually make that weave into the adventure to make it a 5e adventure on its own was rough. Wasn't it? not rough, but it was. It wasn't rough. It was it was a different experience. 5e, I've, I have experience writing for 5e. I worked on Adventures in Middle-Earth, um, which won an any. Woo! -hoo. Um, but well, I love Adventures in Middle-Earth. <laughs> I, I, I prefer the One Ring itself, um, but Adventures, I think, is the best adaptation of Middle-Earth you're going to get in 5e. Um, no, it but, really is. But, but 5e, it, there are more... I always feel like the OSR has more implicit options by having less rules. 5e has a lot of options in its rules. It does. And uh, I um, enjoy 5e a lot. I didn't think I would. But I enjoy I enjoy all of them. I don't understand Pathfire well enough to be call myself a huge fan. But I've played it. And whenever I play it, the GM is what makes the difference. But yeah. Swords and Wizardry um, can be played a lot like 5e. And I think that's the awesome part of both. So. Well, 5e is, is a game that the rule, at its core, it's an easy-to-teach game. Here's advantage. Here's disadvantage. Roll over your difficulty. Go. Okay, and then here's the here's some hiccups for you. <laughs> right, and then yeah. here's the add-ons based on what you're playing. No, and it makes it, but it makes it cool, and you can add as many or as little as you want. Um, Wizards of the Coast and Jeremy Crawford in particular did a uh, fantastic job on the rules. Whether it's your thing or not, that here mm -hmm. or there, but it's well done, and they certainly have treated our, us as third-party uh, publishers very well to give us the opportunity to create things rather than flood the market with stuff that you know takes all the air out of the room. So it keeps uh, James and I actually being able to do things. <laughs> yeah, keep us employed. Um, I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm really excited for this. I love the cover. Um, I, getting a blank check for my creativity was awesome. And I mean, a blank check creatively, not a blank check from Frog Cut Games. Um, and uh, I'm that really, might not mean much, depending on what time, what time of year it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. um, no. I'm excited for the next one. I'm excited for the holiday. Can, you, can you give us a hint about the next one in this series? Um, the next one in this series or the holiday one? No, no don't, with the holiday one, we'll say at the very end. Go ahead, okay. next one in the um, series. The next one in this series is definitely very different in tone. Very different. Um, it is darker. Um, and <laughs> Bill always jokes with me that he wanted me to include a hag. And I, I and I didn't even realize it when I wrote it that there's a hag when I was when I was doing that when I was like there's a hag in there so it, you know it, it he tells it to everybody because uh, we're doing the horrors unbound series and uh, there's uh, going to be a hag there too because he rec I think recommended to Scott Swift mm -hmm. and it, it there's just lots of great stuff coming out of us at Frog God right now and it's a pleasure to work with guys like you and like Tom Canales and Casey Christopherson, Scott Swift uh, even Chuck's Matt Skeeterbill <laughs> no deal everybody that we work with is we're getting. Solid material. It's different than it has been. We don't make as many of the 900-page books. That we're not dead, though. We were almost dead then because that was the work involved. There was intense. These mm -hmm. are still intense, but there's there's lots of different ways to show your creativity and work with lots of people. And the, one of the joys about it is there's so many options. We let James kind of pick what he wanted to do, and we were really happy with what came back. How many times do you got anything from us saying you have to make? We need you to write about exactly this. Uh, in the entire time I've written stuff for Frog God, and I've done, I did a, a little thing in Bard's Gate, I did a module for Northlands, mm -hmm. I think the only time I got anything specific was uh, when they said, hey, would you write the entry for Ten Cars Tavern that's in Bard's Gate? And that was it. It was like, just write the Ten Cars. Hive of scum and villainy if there ever was one. <laughs> and, oh, it's, it's a terrible, terrible place. Don't go there. So... But uh, so it's a different kind of tone. So the, now the Christmas module, we're going to be, I don't want to say too much. I'm not going to show the cover. I really want to. <laughs> I, know, I know. It's such a good cover. Oh, my God. But, um, anyway, but uh, it, it was, we had talked about this last year and uh, we had known, we had always, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. It's getting late in the year. And I was talking to James and he, I had mentioned to him and he grabbed it. And within six minutes, he had owned it. And within 36 hours, he finished it. 
<laughs> and it's not short. It's not like it's intentionally it's short. It's a, a real module. Thousand words, and that's the Swords and Wizardry version. Yeah, and so uh, that we're excited. That will be happening sometime closer to the Yule season. You will be if you're watching the video, you'll know. We're not going to share about it on Facebook much, but it's uh, going to be exciting. It'll be fun. It won't be very. It's not going to be a huge release, but it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody. So should we at least tell? Can we? Can we tell the name of the encounter that sold Bill on the whole thing? Oh, splatter yourself. Oh, thank you. Uh, one of the encounters I, I, I included in the module is called There Arose Such a Splatter. And um, that actually tells you a lot about the cruel tide elves and everything else he's got so there. So we were going to stop with that. Otherwise, we'll just give it away because it was really oh. funny. So anyway, um, right now going on on Indiegogo, you have the uh, Invito, Invino Gigantus. And it is available for all three systems, uh, Pathfinder, Source of Wizardry, and 5th Edition. James Spawn, thank you very much for joining me on this one. And uh, I will talk to you mostly every day as we get the rest of these put together. So thank you. But thank you, everybody else. And uh, please support our um, that on Kickstarter. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. Bunnies and Burrows still has six days left or seven days left. And that one is, if you like unique things, and it's um, based on the role-playing game from 1977 and Watership Down, um, this is about the only chance you had to buy a Bunnies game like that. <laughs> And it's the original guys who wrote it. They care a lot about bunnies, and it's really cool. So, crap. I think I froze Zach. No, we're good.